Hey there YouTube, this is DieFlyFish. Just want to show you an experiment that I'm going to do. Here's a new cell that I made utilizing the magnesium and electrolyte compound that I've been using before. A small piece of carbon with some shrink tape just to hold it in place. This is the weight. and It's uh, 6.26 grams or so thereabouts. Okay. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be running an experiment. This is with it, uh, you know, it, there's some moisture here, okay? I'm going to be taking that cell, placing it in this container with silica gel and molecular sieve, or extra molecular sieve. So the surface area of the absorbent is infinitely greater than what the constituent um, amount of moisture uh, trapped in the cell will be. <clears throat> We're going to uh, measure the voltage and the amperage on this cell, and we're going to see what it's showing to start with here. So I'll see if I can put this down right here, and see if I can get this so it's not shining so horribly in the overhead. Let's see if I can arrange it such. Is it any better? Not really. Hang on. There we go. All right, so. First things first, see if I can keep this in the visual here. And I will pick up the cell as such. And we'll see what the milliamp hour is as of right now. Okay? So we're showing around 50 milliamp hours on that cell. Okay? So that's that. And then what we will do is we will simply take that one off of here and move it over to the voltimeter. And likewise, show you what that's showing. Okay, and again, I have this on the 0 to 3 volt scale. Let's see if I can make it so it's easier to visualize. Okay, so this should register 3 volts there, according to the way I have it hooked up. And again, I'll hook up this little cell to that. And you will see the volts in the background what this cell is producing. Okay, so we're at about 1.8 volts, just a smidgen under. Okay, and that's all in analog meter. So what we're going to be doing next is I'm going to be taking the cell and I'm going to place it into the container and we're going to register what the voltage is and what the weight of it is after the experiment and then we'll go from there and see what the output is once it's been completely desiccated. So here is the cell sitting in the chamber getting ready to be desiccated. So again I started this at approximately 20 after I leave it in there for 12 full hours or maybe even 24 to ensure that it's completely desiccated and then we'll do a couple experiments with the like by just adding a drop of water to see what it does. So for what it's worth, that's step number two. I want to show you. This is a small test cell that I put in a container with silica gel as well as molecular sieve over 30 hours ago to determine if complete desiccation of a small cell will allow for any residual electrical current to flow in these type of crystal cells. So the surface area of the desiccant exceeds the surface area of the cell by many, 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 many folds. So we do have a sufficiently anhydrous environment here to pull all the remaining water out of these cells. So what we're going to do is we're going to test that cell to see what type of voltage, if at all, is registrable after being desiccated for this length of time. And we are now at the about almost the 24 hour mark. And the oscillator and my big cell is still working quite well. So in any event, so we're 24 hours out. Still going. Okay guys, this is the desiccated cell that just came out of the gel and molecular sieve desiccant chamber. No imbibing whatsoever and I'm going to register the voltage. I have it on the millivolt scale to start with. So we'll see what it shows. Mm. 
and switch to the volt scale. So even after being desiccated for over 30 hours, it's still registering a voltage. Let me see if I can attach it a little bit more firmly here. There. So from what I'm seeing here, that's an anhydrous cell. <coughs> Anything that could be pulled out from a water standpoint has been. And that's what the voltage is showing. So this is acting as a crystal cell. And again, there's been no imbibing. As a matter of fact, you can even see the tiny little spicules of the zinc oxide crystals that came off the side of that cell right there in the bottom. It's a bit hard to focus in on, but they're somewhat exophytic. There, I think you can see it right there a little better. And there's some other ones that have grown on this cell. But suffice it to say, um, after spending 30 hours in that chamber, um, that's what we're looking at. And I'll, I'll weigh this just for grins to see what it, what it weighs. Okay, here's the weight of the cell. Status post being in the desiccant chamber for around almost 30 hours. So we're at 5.83 grams. So again, that shows you what the water loss was and what it's at right now. So, for what it's worth, there you go.